Welcome back to the Ben Stewart Podcast, everybody. Today, we have a very special guest. Dr. Cassie Huckabee is the founder of Grit Natural Medicine. She is a Bachelor of Science in Nutrition and Chemistry from Texas Tech University, attended medical school at Baystier University, where she obtained her doctorate in naturopathic medicine. During that time, she healed from multiple autoimmune conditions, vaccine injury, and mold illness through drastically changing and reconstructing her lifestyle and utilizing living and living the medicine that she was studying. She feels her primary role as a doctor is leading and educating patients on how to not only prevent disease and disorder, but also to regain their health so that they can live their best life. Helping each other individual, helping each individual obtain optimal health so that they are able to live out their purpose and enjoy life to the fullest without relying on any medication, supplement, or practitioner. I've been following her on Instagram for quite some time now. You're going to want to check this podcast out. So let's get right to it on the Ben Stewart podcast. All right, we are back. Dr. Cassie Huckabee, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. We got Gordo over here pushing buttons. Doing my thing. <laughs> Happy to be here, guys. You know, uh, what I love about this, so I'm actually on your Instagram page right now, and under your name, it says, Turning Your Life Into Medicine. I love that, for one. <laughs> Yes. Um, it's expanding what medicine is in most people's minds. And then you say reminding you of your unlimited potential. And so mm -hmm. I did this show on Gaia called Limitless, and it was all about human potential. And um, so I love, I love hearing about that. And I love what I'm hearing from you is something aside from at least the, the conventional side of allopathic medicine, which is we have your answers. Not, not that mm -hmm. the medicine lives inside you, not that, you know, the, the answers live inside you, not that the potential lives inside you, but we have the best practices come to us. And I want to no. know, you know, have you always been this badass or did it just, <laughs> was there something, was it when you were going through med school and you realized you had to turn your own health around? When did you start realizing that the medicine is within us? Yeah, I wish I would have been that badass in the beginning. I think my journey would have been expedited, but we can't do that. So um, it really was um, in the depths of healing. It was when I was a slave and imprisoned by what I thought at that time was my lifestyle. Um, and I thought that the everything I was doing was going to heal me, that, I, that the supplements, the, the diet, um, the light, the movement, the meditation, the breath, I thought all of those things were going to heal me. And, um, and then I was trapped by the doing of those things. And then I understood I had this massive shift in it was how and why I was doing those things that actually communicated to my cells. And then it opened my mind to this entire different perspective that it's not that I am flawed or it's not that the human body is flawed. It's that it's right. And it is communicating with this world, this metaphysical background that we're swimming in, and it's having a proper response to the input. And so then when I started understanding it from that perspective, everything I did changed, why I did it changed, how I did it changed. Um, and then I experienced the freedom, which is why most of us want to have optimal health is so that we can have the freedom to live um, and live fully. And so that whole perspective shift really opened my eyes to everything. And it, and it was no longer that we needed something external to us to have this thing that is healing. That's just <laughs> elusive. If you look towards what medicine says, what society says, you're always going to be chasing it. When you flip it on its head, it's right here with you. And then when you you know, I talk about premises and when you're starting from a flawed premise, even the questions you ask, even if they're correct, they're going to be flawed. And to me, that was medicine. Um, and so when I changed from the premise of the body is wrong, how do we fix it to the body is right? Why is it doing what it's doing? Then I started uncovering these truths with a capital T that then when we took action in that direction, we got massive results. And I experienced this in my own health first and foremost, and then turn this into um, my practice and my medicine. And it really is your life is your medicine. And unfortunately, when you don't pay attention to that, 
whatever health expression you're currently experiencing is a reflection of your life. The medication you're taking every single day, multiple times a day, and it's all in your control. And so when you understand this, it's massively overwhelming, but massively liberating because then you're in the driver's seat and now you can change your lifestyle, um, which is so many different factors. And that communicates with this quantum device that we're walking around in, in this flesh suit. And then it drastically alters your health expression, your um, experience of life. So yes, it's not outside, it's inside. And when you realize that it really does start making your action steps um, very purposeful. I almost feel like that was so beautiful and succinct. We could stop right there. Um, sure. so, <laughs> I want to. I want to tease this out. Uh, <laughs> Mic drop. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> so, so you went through your twenties and you experienced autoimmune issues, um, vaccine injury, and mold um, illness. I want to get into that, and I, uh, there's a couple aspects of this I want to explore because you mentioned that you started, you know, realizing what you just told us in your own health first and foremost. And then was that as you were going through school, had you, had you taken on clients prior to that transformation in you? No. Um, so when I started going downhill was in undergrad, um, I, uh, got, the HPV vaccine, I was completely allopathic minded. I was from a small town in West Texas. All I knew was that medicine. I respected it. I was going to give my whole life to it. Um, I did pre-med. I did the whole thing. Um, You couldn't have gotten me to look in the natural world (laughs) at all. (laughs) It just wasn't something I acknowledged or valued at that time. Um, And then I started having symptoms, you know, I wasn't healthy, I just appeared to be healthy. Um, And then, you know, all of it was like a perfect storm of all of these different things um, all came together and they just kind of tipped me over. Um, And then I started really expressing symptoms that I couldn't ignore. And during that time that was in undergrad doing pre med doing all the rounds in the hospital setting and just watching my health just deteriorate. Um, and thinking that, okay, I just got to get through, I got to get to med school and then I can know all of these things and somehow fix this body that just cannot be trusted. Um, but then it just got to a point where, you know, my vision was changing my, um, mental acuity, my memory, um, even my physical body was changing to such a degree that I could no longer maintain. So then I sought out help, um, with just traditional medicine and, um, they had nothing for me. (laughs) They just gave me multiple names and just stacked them and basically said, we're sorry, you got the short end of the stick when it comes to genetics. Um, even though like my whole family is strong, we grew up on a farm and I was like, well, not, it's not true, but okay. Um, and so when they had nothing to offer me and I was giving my everything to this, school of thought, this system, um, it made me just kind of pause. And then that was a window, um, to make me available for other information. Um, and so at a coffee shop one day, just had overheard a conversation about a voodoo doctor and I needed something to that extreme because I had no options except for getting worse and just, you know, deteriorating over time. Um, and so I was available for a different level of information and went and sought that out. Cause I was like, well, maybe they have something this other side doesn't and, uh, completely changed my life perspective. Um, but it was a gradual coming out of it. Um, I had to choose, <laughs> I had to give up everything that I thought I valued. I had to give up everything that I thought, um, held weight, um, was important, was prestigious, was my whole life of work at that point, um, gave it up in an instant, um, to switch over and choose this other thing that I didn't know if it worked, it sounded like a better option. At least they said maybe. And to me, that was better than what I got on the other side. So just simple thinking was like, okay, then I'm gonna try this out. And then I kind of went in with you know, a chip on my shoulder a little bit into um, med school with this thing better freaking work. (laughs) And if it works, it's going to work in me because I'm gritty. I'm tough. Um, I work hard. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm, anytime I met with a challenge, I go after it. So if this can be done, it will be done in me. 
And so then I kind of went into it with a completely different drive in the beginning. Like I needed it to prove itself to me. I needed it to work, to save my life, um, to save my vision, my brain, my skin, everything. And so I went into it and I went all the way in um, and then started didn't see any changes really got worse, which is the healing <laughs> response. Typically got worse in med school, um, just struggled through powered through and about two years in started noticing some changes <laughs> and then just kept going and going and going and going. And by the end of med school, um, I had reversed it all according to, um, testing and allopathic standards and then, um, got out of med school and couldn't find any clinic that would let me say the things I wanted to say because I knew they were true. So I started my own practice and it, it was only after I did all of that, that I started seeing patients. Um, and I think that that was a very important thing for me because then I, when I came in, I came in with everything I had, there was no question in me of like, maybe this will work. I hope it works for you. It could be fun. Like, let's figure it out. It was this, no, this fucking works. I know it works. Trust me. When it gets hard, I can hold your hand because I know it gets hard. It will crumble you. It will bring you to your knees, but I'm going to tell you, you can stand up and then you can walk. And then when you walk, you can run. And so it was a valuable experience. It was hard as hell. Um, but I didn't bring this to people until I, kn I knew it was true for me. Cause there was some part in my mind that was like, if this thing fails, I will go back, try the experimental drug, <laughs> suppress all of this madness and, you know, tell between my legs, go back to Texas and say, you, you guys were right. I messed up. I'm back here. Let's do this thing. Um, but it completely turned out a completely different way. Um, and so that's why I'm here. That's what I bring to people um, was I did it <laughs> and I know it's true. You know what I love about that is, and I, I kind of want to touch base on this because it reminds me of people that I've worked with. And and when I say like clients of mine, I'm, I'm literally just talking about people who want to change their, their diet and lifestyle and their mm -hmm. mindset. Um, but you mentioned that at, at some point you went to see a voodoo doctor. Now, <laughs> yeah. what was your mindset on that term specifically mm -hmm. prior to? prior to you reaching the point where you were willing to expand open to, to try something like that, what was your mindset on voodoo? Yeah. My mindset at that time was that it wasn't valuable, but it was interesting. Um, and that it wouldn't be anything that I wanted to share anything that I was going to like go and tell my parents like, Oh, by the way, I get to shadow at this clinic. Now it was just like, <laughs> I'm going to do this kind of on the sidelines, not let anybody know I'm doing it because it wasn't valuable to me. I thought I was going in, you know, voodoo and quack and all of those terms. I had a psychological meaning with regards to those terms. I hadn't experienced it. It, it wasn't true, but I had a story surrounding those words. Therefore I had a repulsion to it because I was trained to be successful, to be good, to be smart, to be well-read, well-studied, well-researched. Um, you know, science-based, evidence-based, and that word was the exact opposite of that word. So my value system, and this is, you know, a good topic too to get into, my value system was um, repelling even the potential that that would have value for me. Um, and ironically, it was the exact thing that saved me. Yeah, that's that's really what I was driving at because it's not like then you went on to become a voodoo doctor. No, you, you went to Bay Steer and you, you went for mm -hmm. naturopathic medicine, which is incredible. Mm -hmm. And that's a much more of an engageable and approachable title for most people. Um, but what I love about that is you're talking about the, the story that you were holding on to prior mm -hmm. that had to loosen up. And you had to, it was almost like in the story, the, the main character, you needed to take a turn on a path that you normally never would have because yeah. you started realizing that the normal paths that you would just traditionally always take weren't mm -hmm. giving you the result. So there, there's yeah. something interesting. It's almost like the, the mythic presence of what was happening to you at that time was you needed to at least accept that there was more to the story and start mm -hmm. looking outside of that, that bubble. Um, yeah. I love that. I love that. So, so then tell me, like, uh, I, I just want to know a little bit more about that. When you went to that voodoo doctor, like how, how long did that 
um, last? And what what were some of the things that you know were recommended to you? I don't know if prescribed is the right way mm-hmm. to say it, but what was recommended to you? And was any of that, were you already at the point where you're like, you know, whatever, I'm going to try whatever, or did you have some reservation <laughs> even afterwards? Like what, what yeah. was some of the suggestions? Yeah. So I went in, I didn't go in for myself. I went in under the guise of, I was going to get my last little bit of shadowing hours that I needed for medical school, which was a complete lie. I was completely done. My application was already ready. Um, I didn't need any more hours. I just was curious. And so that's what I went in under. I didn't go in for care because I still, again, my value system wasn't that they could help me, that they had anything that they could offer me. And so I went in out of complete curiosity to just sit in the background and just observe this whole thing. And so I went in thinking it was going to be um, similar to what I had experienced in the hospitals, which is you're just like a fly on the wall with the attending and the residents and you're just going around watching what happens. And that's what I thought I was going to experience. And this was totally different. So then when I went into this clinic, it was, we sat down, it was me, the, the, uh, practitioner, um, and the patient in a room for two hours. And I was like, what kind of world am I in? Because the previous one was five minutes in five minutes out. You already had what you needed on the prescription pad. So my world was like completely disrupted from the moment I went in there. Cause I had a preconceived notion of what the experience was going to be. I was just going to be this, you know, pre-med student in the background. And then it was, you know, questions getting to know these humans and, um, it was so true. And we cared about the people and we, all of these different aspects to be in a human, being a human mattered. And it was unlike anything I'd ever seen before. And that's what grabbed me initially. So nobody knew what I was going through. Nobody knew anything was going on in my health. I didn't want them to know because I still thought, you know, I don't know. (laughs) I had no idea. And then, um, so watching these engagements with people and and hearing things like ALS being reversed, MS being reversed, diabetes being reversed. I thought I was in some twilight zone. And so, um, it just opened up my mind to, I can't believe this existed this whole time. And I was floating around in a different universe that was so much more depressing. Like the world I lived in, in medicine, people just got worse and you increased their dose. And then they died very, very sad, inhumane deaths in a hospital in the most cold, terrible setting you could imagine. And I, it was just like that my whole world was just like, there's so much you don't know. (laughs) There's so much here that you don't know. And what if it's more beautiful than you ever imagined? Because just in these encounters, if one person can do it, you know, then my brain went, maybe I could, right? If they could do that, I have that word too maybe I could do that. And so it was this maybe that was fostered in me that created this need for more information, this, I want truth above how it looks. I want truth above appearances. I want truth above prestige. I want truth above the song and dance of everything because I need to live. I want to live. Um, and so it actually wasn't anything done on me. It was me observing what was done in other people. Um, and it was beautiful and it was true. And, um, so yeah, it wasn't something I got to experience. Everything I experienced was me with me. It wasn't me with another practitioner. Well, what a humbling experience because the yeah. words that you were just using there. Now I heard you talk about the word maybe too. And I, I would love, yeah. you know, if, if there's any deeper you want to go on that, Um, Mm -hmm. let's definitely do that. But you also, you said, what if, and you know, you were looking at like, what lies beyond Mm -hmm. my blinders? Like, you know, what lies beyond that, that, that story that I've told myself. And there Mm -hmm. seems to be something about that, you know? So the reason why I, I made waking infinity news, and that's something I do every Monday is, is it, it started a burning man. Um, but waking infinity was this thing for me, where just the simple questions, like the some of the most fundamental questions, like, you know, a lot of the times in society, things are so sophisticated that we're answering yeah. the sophisticated questions before answering any of the fundamental ones, like, yeah. who am I? What is life? What mm-hmm. is health? What is happiness? What do they have to do with one another? And so yeah. to me, just asking the more fundamental questions 
Mm-hmm. That's that's what almost ignites. It opens up this like you know, it opens yourself to infinity because if you're open yes. to asking some of the most fundamental questions, then you're you're actively listening. And I know that I've heard you talk mm-hmm. about the language of the body. So mm-hmm. I would love to hear um, how you work with some of your clients on listening to the body. What are some of the recommendations mm-hmm. that you give? for people to realize it's it's not just Dr. Cassie, you know, saying like, here, I'm going to tell you what your body is saying. It sounds yeah. like you're, you're helping people learn how to listen to themselves. And that's part of, the, you know, turning them on to their higher potential and also that life, uh, their life is their medicine. The, the whole path of their life is their medicine. Yes. So I'd love to hear a little bit deeper on that. Yeah. So, um, it's such a beautiful process. And this is what I think. Um, when I think medicine, I was always, I didn't like the fact that we expected more out of a mechanic than we did our doctors, that <laughs> you go to a mechanic expecting that your car get repaired to where it is drivable without the mechanic always being in the passenger seat. But then when we came to medicine, it was like, okay, this is a lifelong relationship. <laughs> and then I was like, why don't we expect more? And then it, again, we ask these simple questions and you start getting really, um, really simple answers that are truthful. And so this is kind of where I went with this too. Like, why is this relationship, this lifelong thing? Why, um, why do we have symptoms? Why are some people not well and others are well? And so then it leads to this understanding of the body. And for me to understand other bodies, this was not in a textbook. This was me trying to understand my own body, trying to understand my own symptoms and what they actually meant and what they were trying to communicate. And again, so when I'm working with my patients, um, we completely, I ask them to suspend all that they think that they know, because it is in that knowing that it comes and alters everything else, because then you have judgments, then you have, you bring in this very conditioned mind. And in this time, we like to talk about, you know, oh, it's my subconscious, it's my conditioning, society has conditioned me, um, all just everything. But yet we still want to use that tool that we admit that is conditioned. It's already been captured, but we're going to still keep using it. And so I asked them um, just in the initial uh, visit with me to suspend all that you think that you know, and as best you can, which is really, really hard for humans because we value our intellect. We value what we think we know, Um, but that is captured. That is of the past. It definitely isn't of the present. And most of the time we have uh, your health is just the reflection of whatever that formula is for you. And so if you want it to be something greater, you don't just go tinker with the variables, right? That's diet, that's lifestyle um, stuff like sunlight, food, nourishment, hydration. Um, Those are the variables. But what I realized was we had to go and demolish the formula. And the formula is how we, the premise. And so again, from that beginning visit, we start with the premise of my premise is your body is always right. And then we're going to ask questions from there. Whereas the other model is the body is wrong. How do we fix it? And so I try to do things in a very simple way, just like you said, it was so valuable what you um, were pointing out when we get to really, really complex things, we make it harder and more out of reach to live it, to experience it. And this is the world we live in. We love complexity because then we have a million different excuses on why we can't experience that which we're wanting, why we can't change. We love the excuses because it's so complex. The body is so, it's not, it's actually really simple. And just like you were saying, those foundational things, the basics, the basics, the basics, the basics. When I quit trying to chase down mycotoxins and Lyme and this and that and this and all of these rare things. And I said, okay, is my body working like a perfectly functioning human body? Just the basics. No, it's not. So do I have any business chasing down these stealth infections, these crazy, crazy things, these genetic defects? No, why don't we handle the basics first? And then when you start going to handle the basics, that's when you start understanding the language of the body, because that's where it's trying to communicate with you. So the simplest um, example of this is 
to think of just like digestion. And so we think of, you know, parasympathetic, sympathetic, uh, you know, just an animal out in nature. If it is at peace, it will eat, it will produce everything it needs to break down its food. And so humans, because we value our intellect, we work the same way. The body works the same way. So if you're stressed out, you're overwhelmed, you should never put food in your mouth ever. You shouldn't, period. <laughs> Why? There's this whole cerebral phase of digestion that requires you to be at peace, relaxed, not in a rush, not in a hurry, not uh, hating the person you're sitting across the table from. And so we think that, okay, my body's not producing stomach acid. It's not breaking stuff down. My microbiome's off. Da, 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 da. How is your state <laughs> before you go into a meal? And how many times have you repeated it and forced food down it when it says we shouldn't be eating right now? We should be shunting blood away from the digestive system to the cardiovascular system, the pulmonary system, your brain, your visual cord, like to get you to run away from whatever tiger is in the room because you're under a sympathetic response. And so the body is trying to communicate these things to you. But because we value the intellect over the truth, we say, no, I'm tired, so I need to eat. I'm stressed out, so I'm going to use food to medicate this feeling that I'm feeling, not listen to anything that's going on in the body, and definitely not listen to the brilliance of when you're stressed out, you shouldn't touch food, period. Because mm. you shouldn't, right? So then our intellect overrides this brilliance of this body when the body's like, no, like, I'm not making stomach acid right now or enzymes because why? You're stressed out, and we're going to run away from a bear or a tiger or a lion or whatever. Put that in a, you know, more human scenario. You're, you hate work. You hate the person sitting across the table from you. You're stressed out about what's coming after you eat, after your lunch break. Da, da, da. There's so many different things. It doesn't mean your body's wrong. Your body is exactly right. It's just not doing what you want it to do. And so then my work with people is pointing out all of these things. This is just a small scenario when it comes to the human body. The human body is perfect. How do we know? Because we're alive, it doesn't need help. It doesn't need our intellect. It doesn't need our research. It's like, that's cute. I'm already using that. Right. And so, yes, let's use that to expand our awareness of what we're like driving around and what this thing has the capacity to do our potential, but you got to go to the basics and you can't judge this body based on what you think it should do. You want it to be able to eat and digest a meal properly even when you give it three minutes to put the whole thing down, you didn't chew at all. And you're actually really pissed off and not even hungry. Mm -hmm. And so those are those things that we have to go identify because our medical system is so screwed up because, you know, the, another really simple scenario is the way that I view, like in the simplest terms, of course, um, the human body is say you put a human in a movie theater where they're watching a horror film. And we go and we're monitoring everything. We're monitoring hormones, blood pressure, cortisol. I mean, everything, pulse, oxygen. <laughs> so in the horror film, they are going to have a proper response to the horror film. This is why people love movies. They want to feel something because they don't like to feel what real life feels like. So we go to these scenarios where we can feel safe feeling things. And so they're watching this horror film. Their blood pressure is going to increase. Their pulse rate is going to increase. Um, cortisol is going to increase. They're going to have this whole proper response to the input that is, you know, is it true? No, it's just a movie, but they will have a response. They'll get sweaty. They'll have all of these feelings. Their body will have a response. And so if you're looking in the terms of standard medicine, you look in and you monitor those things thinking this body is wrong. How do we fix it? That person has hypertension, elevated cortisol, um, tachycardia, you know, just all of these different words that we put on it. And then my perspective is, okay, the body is perfect. Why would a body be doing what it's doing? So then I look into this other world. Are they sitting in a horror film? Then it's a proper response to have, you know, tachycardia, elevated blood pressure, increased pulse rate, like all of these, it's, that's a proper response to the environment that they're in. And so now if we look at it through that lens, it's like, oh my gosh, the other side would say, let's get them, you know, blood pressure medication. Or if you're in the natural world, let's get find an herb that will change that for them, or let's do aromatherapy to calm down the stress response, or let's, and my side is, let's get them out of the horror film if they don't want to feel what it feels like to be in a horror film. And it's really pretty simple. And so this becomes 
you know, complex because we are very unique individuals. No two people perceive, you know, even a color the same way. We assume that we do, but it's not true. So any type of cookie cutter medicine won't work because we're so dynamic. We're so unique. Our world, our experiences, our eyes, our vision, our perspective, they're so unique. So somebody might like a horror film and they actually feel fantastic. Whereas somebody else, just the thought of going in there makes them cringe. And so there's so much to being a human and we can't just like go and medicate the body and always say the body's wrong. You can't trust the body. Well, that's not true. And so um, when you step out and again, change the premise, this is where I work with people like from the premise that your body is perfect and knows exactly what to do. Just like if you trust that it can heal a cut, it can do it all. It doesn't just stop at the skin and it doesn't just stop like, Oh, you can create a human as a woman in your womb without any knowledge of anything. But then when it comes to a quote unquote disease, your body is just, it has no freaking idea, but you can create a human. And so we've really got to exactly what you're saying, simplify these things, ask like three questions. And then it starts being really ridiculous. The stories that we are so captivated by so much so that we live life in accordance to serving those false gods. And so for me, it's like, I want, I want brutal truth. And that's where I got with my own health. Like, and for my patients, like what is true? I don't care if it's comfortable or not. I don't care if it puts yeah. you in the hot seat. I'm not going to yeah. say what makes you feel good just because I want you to work with me. I want you to change. I want you to experience what I know is available. And to do that, we've got to be brutally honest. We've got to be like, you're your biggest problem. And you're also the most powerful thing on the planet. That's mm -hmm. pretty cool. But if you're always just going to hang your hat on, you know, I'm a victim to everything. My body, I just got my, this body, gosh, this body, why can't I have another body? Like you're never going to come out of it. And so this is where I work with people. Like it's very individualized. It's their world, how they experience it, um, what they've experienced, um, what they're, what's touching them as inputs every single day, multiple times a day. Um, sorry, we have a little visitor. <laughs> I'm going to just listen. <laughs> oh, um, I love he's, it. An, he's an input into my world. And so yeah. this is where um, we really have to get, it's more than just the doing. It's more than just the diet, the supplements, the movement, um, it's more than the doing. This is where it comes in is like, why are you doing what you're doing? How are you doing what you're doing? Um, and what are the intentions behind it? All of this stuff matters. We're so complex and it's massively beautiful, but you go handle those basics, like you just said, and it takes care of everything downstream because this thing is perfect. We, how do we know? Cause we're alive. We've survived so many things that you wouldn't even imagine. Like when I went into pathology in med school, I was like, how are we alive? <laughs> like, everything oh kills my you. <laughs> gosh, everything can kill you. Especially and then now. The, yeah. yeah. Then you get this, like, if you can flip it around, be like, holy cow, I don't have to micromanage all of this shit. Like those pathology books are just atrocious. I don't have to know any of that. And still I'm mostly, well, this thing that I am in, that is my physical body wants to keep me here, wants to be here and wants to experience everything that it can in this physical plane. And that's kind of exciting. It's on your side. Like when you, whatever the you is, depending on what you believe in transitions, this thing doesn't have, it doesn't translate. And so for us to think that this is out to get us, your body is trying to just sabotage your life and wants to just fuck things up and destroy. That makes absolutely no sense. And so again, get to those questions. Just ask a couple of simple questions. Like why would it heal a cut and not my liver? Why would it heal this in this amount of time, but it would take decades to touch the kidneys? I just started having questions. And then when I looked for my truth, not a truth, when I looked external, what do those guys think? What does that think? What does that, when I started looking for truth and then a truth I could experience and know for sure, based on my experience, everything changed just with these simple questions. I want the truth. I don't want some compelling story. I want the truth. I don't want something that just freaking looks good or feels good. Make me uncomfortable. Cause then when I change, I change. And like, that's what we need, you know, even in the time that we're in, 
we need to quit talking about change and we need to actually get massively uncomfortable as an individual, shake things up in our world and we change. And then this whole thing has to change. And so this is the medicine. This is what I work with people on. It's not comfortable. A lot of times they come in and like, you're not at all what I thought. I'm like, good. (laughs) (laughs) That's gritty. We can be positive, but we're going to be gritty. We're going to be tough and we're going to be honest. And sometimes it sucks to sit face to face with like, holy cow, look Mm -hmm. how much I'm getting in the way of the health that I want, um, the health that I am. I'll just say my little two cents, my own little personal journey Honestly, you know, you talk to my friends 10 years ago, they'll say you're a very different person than the guy we knew in college. But the change really, you know, no bullshit. It didn't happen until I was radically honest. I read this book by Adi Ashanti and he's like radical honesty or brutal honesty and unconditional love. He's like, Mm. you gotta be brutal honest, but, you know, love yourself in the process. Be like, hey, were you selfish? Were you being a dick there? Were you, you know, like, (laughs) it's only until I really just own that shit, the real change occurred. Absolutely. So so interesting about that, as you're saying, that is like we also like when when you get to more of the the contemplative lifestyle where you're really contemplating each and every nuance of yourself, you Mm -hmm. also get to notice that like even when you don't think you're fully paying attention, you can tell when you do something out of character or that's not in sync Mm -hmm. with what you know you should be doing Mm -hmm. a behavior, words that you share, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, so I love that aspect of that. Um, and as somebody who's done, who's gone down the the whole realm of, of plant medicines, Mm -hmm. and I see a lot of people arrive at plant medicines and they're like, well, this is brand new. And a lot of it's very uncomfortable Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. it's uncomfortable before it even gets to the sacrament in the mouth, ingesting it. And then it becomes for most people quite uncomfortable. And that's Mm -hmm. part of the healing. It's an ordeal medicine. My question to you is do you have patients that come to you and they they say what they want they want their health and then so you start doing it in your way which is unorthodox to them mm-hmm. have you had people say like this isn't what i want and and not feel like getting truly vulnerable truly uh, mm-hmm. you know authentic and honest and so they they bounce because what you're asking them to do is to confront something that they didn't come to confront they just want you mm-hmm. to make them feel better have you had that Absolutely. Um, That's one thing when I started my practice, I wanted it to be true, which means that I can't, I won't be for a lot of people. I will offend people. I will rub them the wrong way. Um, I'll say things that they don't agree with. Um, And for me, me being true is the first line of weeding out those that don't align with me. Um, But I've had some that think that they want it, Um, and so then they start the process and then I reflect these things back to them in a way that's not harsh, but just in a way of like, I've done it. And I promise you, you go after these things, the supplements won't freaking matter. Um, and there's just moments of where I've understood that people often are choosing to not change. Um, when you realize how powerful the human being is, you start realizing that they're not a victim of anything. And so if you're not changing, it's because you're choosing to not change and not to say that it's, it's clear for you. Um, but it's this whole thing, which I think you're touching on too, um, with, um, these plant medicines is it forces your hand into truth where you no longer have all of your excuses, all of your masks, all of your, you know, personality traits to evade why you do what you do and why you are how you are. It kind of strips you raw. It makes you stand there, um, in your truth. And that's massively uncomfortable. And so for a lot of people, they come and when you start touching the things that they are, they'd rather feel unwell than change certain parts of their world. They want certain things to be comfortable. And the second it gets uncomfortable, they want to bail because we, we don't like that discomfort. We don't like, and this touches on this too. Um, just simple human neurology is we do not like the unknown. We like the known and we will give anything to stay in the known because we feel like even if it's the most miserable existence, we can predict, we think with some level of certainty, what that's going to be like. And so for your brain to say, okay, let's give this up. There's this little bridge that goes over here to what the unknown, 
and what is in simplest form going from the known to the unknown, even if the unknown is the best, most vibrant life you've ever experienced, more truth than you ever, ever experienced, and what you want more than anything, what you go head to head with is this cute little bridge that we call fear. And most people, they'll come and they'll be like, I want it. I want what you're saying. I want to feel it. I want it. And then I'll say this, <laughs> no supplements, this. And they'll say, it'll just shake them to their core. Why? Because you're going to have to go make massive change and it's uncomfortable and you're not going to know what's going to happen. And that's more true than anything. Cause we like to make believe as adults, we're terrible terrible make believe you know participants kids are way better than us at least their world is like lava and like dinosaurs yeah. and something cool ours is we have these atrocious ridiculous little calendars and we have plans and schedules and th this whole make believe life that we think that we get to live and all we have is right here and right now that's make believe it's it's this nasty miserable monotonous world of the known and we like, we will give everything to keep it this way. And it's not true. Everything about life is massively unpredictable, massively uncomfortable and always changing, but we don't like to admit that. So in order to keep this comfort with certainty, the illusion of certainty, we stay in these miserable worlds and try to just duplicate the day before and duplicate the, and just carbon copy everything because then we think we can predict it because we always have lunch about this and I always feel about this bad and I always have gas and a bowel movement about this time because, and it's not true. And so what I ask for people is, is I want you to shake things up. I want you to make yourself so uncomfortable. Like when you are true, it is going to change your relationships. It has to. There's no other way. And when you're true, it's going to change what you do. It's going to change why you do it, how you do it. Obligation is no longer a thing. Being good is no longer a thing. It is true. And this disrupts your world. It, it forces your hand, just like these plant medicines, to go into this world of what is true. I don't care how cute you've made this untrue world. What is true? And then when yeah. you come face to face with that, it forces your hand at what? Change action and you have to take action because when you admit something when you acknowledge something you'll be miserable if you sit there and you don't change and so um it's yeah. it's this world of we want comfort we want healing to be comfortable and just like you said earlier it's not <laughs> it's not comfortable it's not convenient it doesn't look or smell or act how you think that it should but it's true and when you can release your grasp on it needs to be this way or i need to be comfortable going into this world of the end it can't be those two things are not the same and so to be true is to be in your world to be in this now moment that we all talk about it, it takes a massive amount of responsibility to be in this moment as it is and not have multiple different stories making you feel safe in it it's you're just as safe you know on a mountaintop as, as you are in your bedroom but you've got a story that you're safer and maybe you'll survive longer if you stay in that bedroom. It's not true, right? It's a compelling story um, that keeps us, you know, captured by these terrible, you know, little sad worlds we live in when there's so much more out there, but it requires you to be strong enough, courageous enough to go and look at, look at what's true, take massive action, <laughs> take responsibility for the repercussions of those actions. Um, and be the captain of your own ship, which is the only thing that's, you know, ultimately true. Mm. Neil Donald Walsh said, life begins at the edge of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. and that really stuck out to me. It's one of my favorite quotes. And the other thing that stuck out is when you were talking about this, it really reminded me also of the scene from the matrix where Cypher is with the agent eating the steak and he wants to be put back in the matrix. Mm, it's almost mm -hmm. like they go to see you and you're Morpheus and you're like, look, <laughs> this is going to be rough, yeah. but you got a choice. Do you want to stay in the ignorance of bliss or mm -hmm. do you want real change? But Well, and that was one thing, even for me, the only reason I can say these things, um, and that's where I come with like humility and love and compassion with people is if somebody would have said these things to me, I couldn't unhear them. right? When you hear truth, you can't unhear it unfortunately and fortunately. Um, and if somebody would have, you know, grabbed my face and told me these things and like told me to just wash out everything that I thought I knew, I would have lived so much more life so much earlier. Um, because 
all of these stories are really what weigh us down and they, it, they rob us of the vitality of life. Um, and so it's really out of compassion and experience me going through everything and realizing it wasn't the supplements, realizing it wasn't the diet, realizing it wasn't any of the doing stuff. It was changing the being that was me. Um, and so that's where all of this comes from. It's not because I'm, you know, above it or didn't have to do it or was so wise. It was that I had to drag myself from, you know, rock bottom and realize that all of the things I was grasping onto as my saviors were not. Um, and so it's really out of this, like, I want it to go, it can go quicker. It can be yeah. better than you think it can um, be sweeter than you think. Um, but you've got to think in a different way. You've got to have a new, a new mind. Mm -hmm. You know, Gordo, when you said that Neil, um, diamond Walsh, Neil Donald, Neil Walsh. Donald Walsh. Yeah. yeah. Neil diamond. Um, when he was saying life begins at the edge of your comfort zone, it, it instantly reminded me of the flow genome project saying that flow, the flow state starts at mm -hmm. what they claim to be 4% outside of your skill level, outside of your mm -hmm. comfort level of your, mm -hmm. of your skill. And so there's some, some kind of, uh, lateral, um, kind of like symbolism here where, you know, life is also that flow. It's that, is that path. And when mm -hmm. you make your life into this rigid fortress, um, that's when you're starting to only experience your own echo chamber and the things that you've set up for yourself to experience. So you don't experience the unknown and yes. wh where I want to go with that. Um, cause there's, there's a couple more things I really want to touch on here. And one is, so if I have a client, there's a, there's a couple things that I touch on consistently. And usually one of them, you were mentioning diet, you know, and we're talking about mm -hmm. fundamentals. You were saying there, there's something more fundamental than diet as well. Mm -hmm. But I, I go to sex relationships, diet, movement, and environment, mm -hmm. you know, so mm -hmm. we're talking about external inputs. And then from there, you can start to draw on like, what are the internal drivers and the external inputs? Because what you're talking about, you're, you're kind of, it's not like you're abandoning what you learned in medical mm -hmm. school. It just seems like you're, you're giving more credence to the mind and the human and saying mm -hmm. like, what is it inside you that it's, maybe it's not the foods that you're eating, but the state that you're in as you're eating it. But when you uh -huh. have a client, how often do you go through things like their relationships, um, their, their diet, their movement. And then also when you're talking about inputs, environment in general, like are mm -hmm. you, you mentioned you had mold um, sickness and that is an environmental mm -hmm. toxin. So where is that meeting point when somebody comes to yeah. you and there's obviously some kind of environmental toxin, how do you do what you were taught in medical school, but then add yeah. in the Dr. Huckabee? Yes. That's a brilliant question. Um, so we, I do that with every single patient. So this is part of those inputs. So the inputs, you can't, um, in the beginning, you cannot separate all of those things. You can't say that what you're eating doesn't impact your physiology. They very much do. So what I, how do I usually try to explain it with people is, so if we were to sever this big, beautiful ball on the top of our bodies and kind of put it on a plate over here, there are some foundational truths that keep this flesh body optimal. That is the lifestyle that is moving it, that is using it, that is all of these beautiful compounds, that is herbs and food and hydration and light. Those things are how we maintain this physical body. There are certain laws that are we that are at play, right? That we still play within that realm. However, the game changes when you go and put this thing back on the body, right? Because then what happens? Our perception. We can alter um, the input based on what we feel about it. So if you and I are both drinking a green drink, but you, so, and you associate the green drink with health, vitality, all of this vibrance and nature and this, these cosmic compounds, conscious compounds, just goodness, you're going to enhance that natural level of health, um, input into the physical body, the nutrients, the hydration, what naturally comes within that substance. So it's going to have its own value just by putting it in a body without a head. And mostly when we're aligning with these natural laws, it's usually 
a lot of benefit. However, we come put these heads on, you can enhance that by your beliefs and say, I look at a green drink and I think of uh, Gerson therapy and cancer and like being restricted by having to eat this way. And it's just not, I just hate it. I hate the way it tastes. I'd, I'd rather have a milkshake. All of these beliefs come in and alter the input that is a certain value. I can actually diminish that to a certain degree based on how I'm perceiving what I'm putting in my body. And that's where it gets massively like exciting or like overwhelming. Like, why do I never change? Like mm-hmm. nothing ever helps me. Those are all of these different things. It's like, I already know with the question being asked, your like starting point point. So even if a green juice could help majority of the population in you, it gets less of a benefit because you're tainting it with your vibration, your intention, your perception and your beliefs. And so this is where the whole human has to come into play because um, at the end of the day, that matters just as much as the green juice sitting on the table. And then the other thing that we always have to get to is um, I always tell people, um, those are the tools. So the word medicine has been hijacked and we now think medicine is the supplements, the diet that luckily we're now in the world of diet and lifestyle as being medicinal um, and not just something that's in a pill or a supplement or a thing. But you go put these things on a table, it doesn't have an impact until what you introduce it into your body. And so again, is that medicine or is it a tool? It's, those are tools. And so we deal with tools. I deal with tools. I, even in my world, you come over to my house, my house will saturate you with medicine, right? Lights, um, everything that you could imagine. I control for those things because I want my autopilot to be this massively healing environment because it does matter. Those are the things touching me every single second of every single day. I want that to be as optimal as I can because I will respond to my environment, but that's not the end all be all of everything too. That's why I'm saying we are the medicine. Your life is the medicine. These tools that you go and grab for you utilize, they're simply that they're tools. They will not heal your lifestyle. They will not heal your perceptions of things. They will not change you fundamentally as a human. They are tools that will have an input that can have an output that you can kind of alter based on all of that. And so it's this zooming out and being like, what are tools and what's medicine? And we are medicine. You heal without the compound, period. You heal without the surgery. You heal without the substance. You heal without food. You heal without water to a certain degree, right? And so there's these truths, like these ultimate truths that we really have to get to of like, is that the medicine or is that a tool to facilitate you having this massive capacity to do all of these amazing things? And so it's, it's really this, again, this shift, a a change in our perspective, a change in the premise where we start and then saying, yes, these things are so impactful, but to say that if you are somebody who eats Big Macs every single day, you'll never be well. I can't say that either. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you view a Big Mac. And I don't know how how happy you are in your life that you're just so freaking pumped to be alive and be a human in this time that you could turn cigarette ashes into the most vibrant compound on the planet. Because I don't know. Medicine hasn't studied that yet. And I think we're so powerful that we do have the capacity to do things we're not even aware of yet. So I, with people, as they're doing the work, which is going and looking at how you impact and you in relationship to all things, as you're doing that, we definitely help support your physiology. We help detox, help clean up, help regenerate, help restore, help keep you in alignment with what it is to be a vibrant, light filled, perfect physical body. But that's not saying that that's the medicine. And I always Mm -hmm. tell them that this is not the medicine. And I cannot have you leaving here thinking the value is in the herbs. The value is in the doing of any of this. This stuff will not hold if you do not go do all of these other things that we've brought to light. And so that's where, yes, those things we have, like we have to, like, I wouldn't have gotten to the point I was at to even have the awareness that I had, had I not seen those things change me. 
right? Yeah. I changed my diet completely. I went from Velveeta mac and cheese, like the Texas diet of like biscuits and loaves of bread and like, Oh my goodness. Yeah. And I loved it to this whole, like I, every aspect of me changed, my cravings changed my, it was a true change, not a, you know, fix. And I think that's the other thing to bring up here. A lot of people want a fix because they don't want to change. Right. And mm-hmm. what is the fix? The supplement, the oils, the diet. The, and so when I sometimes my treatment for some people is we're not doing a diet <laughs> and they panic. <laughs> what? <laughs> exactly. The last thing you need is a diet. And so it's, it's so individual and it's so powerful when you can actually realize the truth of, you know, some of these things we're trying to convey with words. Um, but it's, it's liberating. And when you understand the difference between like what your body can do without all of this stuff, you like, it's absolutely mind blowing. And then it's an absolute, like beautiful dance to get to then incorporate these compounds to then get to incorporate. And then it's like this like love affair with, I want this to have everything that it needs to be able to handle this stuff that humans don't want to handle and be able to survive the discomfort and, you know, the growing pains of being an individual and what that's like in a world that has trained you to be a carbon copy of what society says you should and could and need to be. Um, and so it's, it's the dance of both of these worlds. So what you're doing is massively powerful and it gives people that foundation again, that we talked about to have the capacity the energy, the, the, the just fortitude to go look at this stuff and be like, no, I'm going to massively change everything. And that takes a lot of energy. That takes a lot of grit. That takes a lot of power. And sometimes, not all the time, but most of the time that doesn't come from a diet full of um, marshmallows, hamburgers, and, you know, what slurries. <laughs> oh, me. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know. just took the wind out of Gordo's sails, unfortunately. <laughs> Um, I'm sorry. I'm I'm loving this, you know, and I really, I really have to say this is, this is perfect because it's right in line with the whole reason why I did the show Limitless on Gaia to begin with, which Mm -hmm. was, you know, so you're mentioning there's all these tools and then, and then there's the medicine. Once you said tool, I started to think, well, what wields the tool, right? You can have a hammer and and a hammer is great to build a house, but without someone wielding it, um, and so I, I was thinking, like, what is that? And th- really, the, the core thing I could get to is is consciousness in general, mm-hmm. which is that elusive term. Un- unfortunately, yeah. you know, you have the brainiacs that are in that sophisticated mm-hmm. world trying to be like, well, we still don't have an answer for what it is. Yeah. Um, but what I see that consciousness does, and this almost gets back to the matrix, is mm-hmm. when Neo says it's it's choice. Because what does consciousness do? It, it like, I mean, I'm not going to be the authority here saying what is consciousness and, and what does it do. But I, I like the, you know, the shorter, simple answer to it, which is consciousness is is that thing of self awareness. It it, it mm-hmm. is that thing that either allows you or is your self awareness, and can can simply color your perspective. It can, it can color the way you view something. And so what you're talking about is, is everything, even the way that you're breathing. Cause a lot of people mm-hmm. are like, Oh, breath, it'll change everything. Right. If, mm-hmm. if breath, <laughs> it, the tool is wielded correctly. Yeah. yeah. And what I, what I love about that, cause I feel like you already answered my other question. I was going to ask about like, you know, biohackers love their technology. They love mm-hmm. their supplements. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, that's not, a problem, you know, from what I'm seeing, even in, in your practice, that wouldn't be a problem, but it doesn't, it's again, tinkering with the tools without addressing consciousness and and the medicine, the real medicine, which would be consciousness allowing itself to be in the state of fill in the blank. And so I think one thing that you're touching on there too, goes back to what you were talking when you talk about flow and flow state and what we know, um, in those states. And so, um, but I have another little spin to put on that too, because again, we talk in this consciousness community with this, I love that this word is coming up. Um, and we're starting to ask better questions and kind of, you know, dive a little bit deeper into these thoughts. Um, but part of this truth is what we want and 
that flow, what you can access in that flow state is when, you know, we call it no mind or when all the conditioned part of you is no longer taking the driver's seat. Um, so the autopilot you is no longer there and something so much greater, so much more tapped in and so much more powerful, right? We talk about the now, not the future, not the past. The only thing we have is the now. So our full capacity is in the now. It's not in the future and it's also not in the past. And so anytime you come in and lead with your um, mind that is coming in through past, which is captured, conditioned by what you've experienced. And it's technically flawed at best, um, if not just completely untrue. And so that flow that you're talking to also is kind of pulling in this as well. What people are wanting that certainty that they want so much that they think they're going to get through learning through books, through accumulating intellectual knowledge actually comes in that time that we call flow, which is also insight, right? When you have insight, you have the exact perfect response to reality as it is. And so when we look at the immune system, we're like, oh, a heightened response or a, a response that's less than what you would want it to be is unhealthy or it's not optimal. And this comes with this whole world of the mind and consciousness too. Anytime the mind comes in, it's operating on something that's known, which is something in the past, which is something that's not here. And so then you're coming with your knowledge to come and be in this now reality moment using a tool that's not equipped for this. The tool that's equipped for this is that direct line, is that flow, is that insight, right? And then your response, that's when we have like humans doing these amazing things that you're just like, how did they access that? You ask them to do it on like on the spot and they're like, mm -hmm. I don't know, right? And My what God. we have the capacity to do if we could step away from this comfort, this certainty, is you would experience the certainty by not trying, by being here fully without this mind stuff. Um, and the one thing that I find often, the more educated my patients are, the harder it is to get them out of the stuff that's making them unwell because yeah. they value their intellect. They value what they think they know. Those stories dictate everything in their life. They color everything in their life and they do not want to give them up because they think that is something that has to do with them. And we think we've got to become something. We think we have to prove something. We think we, like, if you do all these things and maybe you'll arrive. And again, it's that what you touched on with flow and what we're touching here on with insight. Insight is that certainty of like, um, no matter what happens, first of all, I couldn't predict it right? But if I have this certainty in this body, in my potential, in my capacity, I know I will have a response that fits that scenario perfectly. But even if I try to like calculate and plan and predict the day before, I would have been flawed because that moment, you will not know all of the components of that moment, moment until you're there. And so then to respond to reality is where we should be. And then most problems would disappear because most problems are just drug in through this psychological memory based, um, just the way our minds are conditioned. So we're on autopilot majority of our life, wondering why we can't have this world that we want. And it is in what you're touching on that flow, um, which is what I call insight um, of just like this now, like, I don't know how I access that, but holy hell, that was cool. That's where I think if we could live in that, we would have healthy bodies. There wouldn't be all of this, you know, stuff that the body would be like, can you guys just like, listen to what the hell I'm saying? Like this hurts move or that feels good. Go towards that. Like it would be really, really simple. Um, and to touch on the biohacking, like the one thing, cause I was in that world too. I was just captivated by lasers. I was captivated by all of this <laughs> stuff and I still am, but I like to flip it around, um, and look at it in two other, you know, two different perspectives. One, that if we're, we have this like amazing technology that already has the capacity to communicate to my body, it means my body already has this technology within it. And so then the other thing too, is if you can induce something with a tool, you can induce it without the tool, which is massively like, that's where I started getting like, okay. Cause I got to a point when my skin was really bad. Um, I had scars and I was like, okay, now that my skin is healed, I'm going to go laser them off just to have perfectly smooth skin. And then I was like, if a laser can do it, <laughs> why can't I do it without the laser? 
or what if I could, I just have this limit to what I think I am capable of doing based off of what I read in a book. And again, this goes back to where our mind come in and say, okay, you need this device to be well. And what I've learned, at least with patients is if most people, if you give them a device, they outsource their power to the device, you take the device away, they can't be well without it. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I got to in my practice, where I stepped away from that biohacking world. I stepped away from these quantum devices because I realized that the true quantum devices were outsourcing their power. You take the, the toys away, the tools away, and they think that they lose the capacity to sustain that state of well-being. And so then mm -hmm. um, there's so much psychology that's part of this. And the other thing, too, is everything that we do is to try to capture some component of what nature does. And what one of the biggest things that I found with your life is your medicine. Um, I was literally brought to my knees when I started you know, taking all of my researching mind and like, you know, in the world of grounding, the world of sun exposure, the world of even using laser specific frequencies of light um, to induce healing responses in the body. And then I just zoomed out and like washed it all out and was like, oh my gosh, standing on the ground outside with friends, if scientists came in and like isolated things and measured for things, there was massive healing going on. But the sweetness that I like fell in love with was you didn't even have to know all of that was happening in this world is for you. And it's, it's communicating with you and healing you in these moments that are sweet, these moments, even this is medicine, connecting, communicating, having a dialogue, making our, you know, minds reach for something new, right? Is medicinal. And we don't have to have the science to support it, to, to have the body respond to the beauty and, you know, the magic that comes in these moments. So yes, now we value grounding and now we value light as medicine and all of this other stuff, but it's, it's all here mm -hmm. and it has been the whole time. And sometimes the sweetness of it again, when my life was so overwhelmed by the tools and the devices and the, I lost a lot of the sweetness and part of being a human is to just be here to taste when you taste to feel when you feel to smell really smell when you smell and to see things completely when you look at them like to be here and i realized like the more i could just like drop all of this other stuff the more life just was medicine for me with me and the less I needed something. And then again, it touches on depending on what you believe this oneness in the world that we're in and that it's all here for us and the herbs, like how sweet that you could make a meal, use herbs, use this, this beautiful stuff that comes from nature for free. And it yeah. is medicine, it's hydration, it sustains you on it. It's just such a beautiful thing. And so to go so far into that world can sometimes strip the life, the humanness from the experience. And what I've seen is a most people heal and are so much more optimal and well when they forget that they need medicine, when they forget mm. that their food is they're just having this is what i try to do with my patients like on accident your whole morning is medicine we changed your light we changed your drink we changed what you do and you forget that you're medicating anything but you get the benefit and like that's the world we live in and there's a sweetness there and there's um such a beautiful dance and it makes you like you know just happy to be here, happy to be alive where there's no striving. There's no, I'm doing, drinking this to heal this so that I can do no, like freedom. Why do we want to be well? So lab results look good. No, we mm -hmm. want to be well because we want to be free. And why do we want to be free? Because we want to experience everything that's here to experience. And you can't medicate your way to that. You can't device your way to that. Um, it's the understanding, like extract the wisdom from these things, extract the wisdom from being like, what can this thing do? You can shine it on my radio and it, the photons can, what does that mean about me? Like, holy hell, mm -hmm. that's cool. That light can travel through fascia and it's not disrupted in the slightest. What does that say about me? Not, oh, then give me a device that can, no, I want it. Like, let's flip it around. We are the medicine. 
those are the tools. Let it be play, right? When you know this, like what I hope is I hope that more of us can speak this language to the point where we don't need doc. We don't need medicine because we realize we are. <laughs> and it takes such a like slip that it's like this is oh, wow. yeah. pulsing yeah. through our veins. This is in our cells. It's not this thing's going to spontaneously combust. And we've got to find some way to manipulate it and convince it to do other Otherwise, it's we're walking in this truth, understanding it, and then, you know, supporting it as it needs to do what it already knows how to do. And so this is where, you know, there's this beauty and this dance to it of like the simple, right? The simple, the beautiful, the like, we could go sit outside and we're saturated with medicine. You could, you know, go and isolate all the different things and you still wouldn't be able to grasp all that it does, right? We still don't even know all of the, the bands of UV, UVA, B, C, who knows how far it goes. We have to have tools to understand it and we've got to have, you know, it doesn't mean it's not already there. They're going to discover something in a hundred years that we're like, damn it, I wish I would have just known to just like play, skip in the sun. Like, yeah, it's medicine. And so like, this is the world we're in. I want us to be like, captivated by science captivated what this stuff must mean but at the same time go back to the simplicity of like if it can have an impact in you you've got it (laughs) it cannot communicate to something that cannot have you know communication if we didn't understand the same language this would be pretty you know uneventful and not very captivating for people just be like us (laughs) <laughs> right yeah. or it would be massively entertaining but we speak <laughs> the same language therefore we yeah. can communicate and so to know this about your body would massively change your perspective of it and then it would massively change society because if we truly believe this and it wasn't just a cute affirmation it wasn't just something that we forced into our minds every single day of like no my life is my medicine you know i can heal myself da, 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 da. if we really believed it if this was pulsing through our veins our perspectives would shift, our values would shift, our stories would have to shift because so many of those stories that we're holding on to do not align with something not true, right? Mm, you wouldn't yeah. need anything. Yeah. And that's a different, that's a completely different playing field. This yeah. is really good. I, I really appreciate this. And it's also, it's, it's giving me new perspective and new language around what I, like a few things that I'm not going to try and, um, label it too much, but you know, there, there's something about the, you know, the science does some kind of commodification when we want to understand it. It's almost like we want to manipulate it when it's, yeah. it's already there. It's, it, it's, it's almost just like you already have it. Why put a middleman in between? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. You know, I noticed this with music, um, you know, as a musician and I've, I've, been around many musicians that uh, I feel like they've gone through the same thing. When you're making music because it's that raw outlet for you, it just comes to you and it comes so naturally. And then there's a point where you get on a label or you're in a band and you, because you've set up that framework, you have to make music. And then, so as you're Mm -hmm. writing the music, you're already commodifying it and you're already turning it into, well, is this going to be a hit? Should I bring in the chorus at, you know, 50 seconds, you know, so it could be a radio hit. And you're already, you're, you're already missing the thing that's coming through. The thing that's happening is, is the experience of making the music. And that's just an analogy to what I feel like you're, yeah. you're talking about the, the life is already happening. The medicine is already yeah. there. And I love how you say we, we keep getting in our own way. Um, yeah. I, I don't want to overly labor the point, but I guess I would just say what, um, as, as we're nearing the end here, like what would you say to the audience in this day and age post 2020 without getting into the specifics but just knowing that there's a lot of anxiety and people you know people are worried for various things you know whether it be the economy or a virus or whatever it might be um what would your best advice be that you know i I hate one size fits all anything and i know that's why you Mm -hmm. say in your practice it's very individualized but if, if you had to mm-hmm. say something that the world could definitely use right now and just kind of like sum it up, what would that be? 
Yeah. Well, and I think that this lets you continue to be an individual, right? I would just say that anytime you're faced with anything in life, um, ask, is it true? And, um, really go into it, go into it with everything that you've got to really seek, um, the answer to that. And you cannot look to somebody else. And that's where the individual comes in. Is it true for you? And, um, then even following that up, um, if you can't get to like, yes or no, just get to like, what would I feel like if it wasn't or whatever I'm believing in, what would it feel like if this wasn't true? Right. And, um, that's really how I went into medicine. That's how I go into my everyday life, my relationships, um, my responses, my conditioning. Um, I just have a massive curiosity about myself instead of trying to change the world. I try to understand why I am the way I am in the world. And I try to understand my responses, my reactions, my, um, part and to understand anybody else we first have to understand ourselves and so with all things i would always 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 just say is it true and wherever that leads you is exactly where you need to go um, with all things because then when you know truth you can take massive action in the direction of that truth and no matter what it's true you can drop the right or wrong the good or bad it's true and what is true is true and true holds and so then it makes things a lot more simple and so that's one thing that i found um that has held me when things get really complex and overwhelming I'm like holy cow which part like what is going on it's like is it true mm-hmm. and go seek out that answer um and so i think it keeps it simple and of course is very individual because what's true for you sometimes might not be true for me, but, um, the cool thing is when we get to these big universal truths, even though we're on a bunch of different paths, we always end up in the same center clearing, you know, being like, Holy cow, you're here too. And I'm here. And you came here from that. Ink. we mm-hmm. might be onto something here guys. And how did we get here? We all followed our brilliantly unique, beautiful path of what is true. Mm-hmm. I almost wish somebody thousands of years ago would have said, know thyself. You know, I think that would have just solved all these you know, problems. Should we quote that now? Could like I don't know. I, 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 I Do think it. I already trademarked it. I'm gonna modify it and then I'm gonna turn it into a biohacking tool. I think you should. <laughs> I think you're on to something. I'm just glad I was here in this moment. Right um, on. Yeah. You're so in the now. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> so mm-hmm. Dr. Cassie Huckabee, I love this. Honestly, this this was really enlightening. Even though, mm-hmm. what's what's interesting about it is like you you're speaking my language. You're talking about really you're bringing up what caused me to make Limitless the show on Gaia. But mm-hmm. hearing it from you is is so refreshing, and it's also so needed. Not just in in my life, but I feel like all of our listeners, this is something that is is truly needed. I want the audience to be able to connect with you or, or check out your body of work. I know that you also do yeah. interviews and stuff like that. So how can people dive deeper into your work? Yeah, well, you can work with me. Um, my practice is Grit Natural Medicine. So our website is just gritnaturalmedicine.com. Um, and that's how you can work with me directly. Um, we've got multiple different ways, um, communication, conversation, um, deep dive medicine. Um, it's all there for you. Um, and then I'm also on social media at Dr. Cassie Huckabee that might be changing soon. Um, but there, and then at grit natural as well. Um, and trying to put up truths and things that can shift how you view yourself. Um, and then we also have a YouTube and we put up different videos, different interviews on there as well. And that's Dr. Cassie Huckabee. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, I just have to say, I I really appreciate your approach. I appreciate everything you're doing. I've really enjoyed following your Instagram feed. And I'm just so glad that we were able to nail you down for this interview. Me too. It's been amazing. And thank you again. I think too, if people could go and spend time, I tell them this all the time um, and have even recommended um, your work often, if we could go saturate our minds with what is possible. And and um, go and spend all of our time looking towards the beautiful, the magnificent, the um, parts of us that are unlimited and massively powerful. Um, this would creep into our cells. This would creep into our psyches. And um, as a result, would creep into our realities and our experience. And so 
go and seek out all of those things that show you and prove to you and reinforce in you how powerful we truly are. So I appreciate your work as well. Yeah, thank you for that. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we do this every single Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have on thought leaders that are really changing the game. It's changing the way that we perceive. It's it's not just giving you tools, but it's also allowing you to understand that you are the medicine. So this is the perfect guest for that. I just want to say thank you all for constantly showing up, for being so active and engaging with all the content that we're putting out. Um, make sure you go on Mondays. I put out Waking Infinity News and then do deeper dives over at benjosephstewart.com. But for this one, I just want to say, again, thank you so much, Dr. Cassie Huckabee. You have put things in a way that have truly helped me today. And um, yeah, I just want to make sure that the audience understands you are the most brilliant, powerful, beautiful technology known to man. So maybe you should start swiping and poking and zooming that thing a little bit more. Yes. So, <laughs> so until next week, I want all of you all to drink a glass of water in love, enjoy the sun, enjoy your friends and your family, and just remember to keep coming back to love and you, what you have inside mm -hmm. you. So until next time, this is the Ben Stewart podcast. Mm -hmm.